Welcome to Life Kids Online, where your family can have church together with other families from all over the world. I'm your host, Katie, and we hope that this leads you to worshiping God together and leads into great conversations with us and with each other. If you're new to our church, we'd love to get to know you. We have a super short form for you to let us know who you are and how we can partner with you better. And click on the link to get connected. And just for fun, we wanna hear how many people are watching with you together today. Just type the number in the chat. Is it two, five, three, 10? I don't know, I can't see you, I'm by myself. <laughs> now, if you've got kids who are younger or older, we have lots of video content for each specific age group. You can check that out later. Right now, this worship service is for your whole family to have church together from anywhere. And we've got a special episode of The Loop Show for you today. We do lots of fun challenges each week on The Loop Show, and this week is no different. Let's get it started with a family challenge that you can do at home right now. And I hope you're not watching this by yourself because it takes at least two people to do this challenge. It's charades. Okay, here's how to play. So pick one person to act out the picture on the screen and everyone else will guess what it is. Now, if you're the one acting, you'll face the screen and everyone else will turn away from the screen and face the person giving the clues. Don't look at me and no peeking, okay? Now, for the person that's still facing me, you're doing it, right? Don't make any noise at all. No talking, no sounds, just acting it out, okay? Now, is everyone else facing away from the screen except for the actor? Good, okay. Ooh, okay, so here's our first picture. Nobody turn around and see what it is until they get the answer right, okay? Now I wonder, maybe I should give some clues or if your actor is doing a really, really good job. Okay, so I'm gonna give you about 10 more seconds. You can't see the countdown clock, so I'll just count it down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Did you guess? It was a banana! That was an easier one. Okay, so you can let the same person keep acting out this picture, or you can switch it up a little bit if you want, but let's get set up again to play with just one person looking. Are you ready? Okay, no peeking. Here's the next picture of something God created. Hmm, okay, do you know how to act this one out? It's a little bit harder. At least it's something that moves around a little bit more than a banana. Okay, don't turn around until the person acting says that you got it right. Okay, let's do 10 more seconds. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It's a shark. <laughs> okay, one more. Same person, or you can switch it up real quick if you're ready. Okay, are you ready for this last one? No one looking except for the person acting it out. Are you ready? Okay, here's the next picture. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, I don't know how I would act this one out. It's harder than a shark and harder than a banana. Okay, no peeking. Now keep on going if they haven't guessed it yet. Just keep thinking of maybe more ideas of how you'll act it out. All right, 10 more seconds. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Did you guess it? It's a star. Great game, guys. You know something else that God made that was in this challenge? Families, that's right, you. God made humans to need a family. And lots of other things he made don't live in families, but God wanted us to live in groups of people who would love us and care for us. Now, I hope your family will participate in this next part together like you did for the challenge. Worship, it's a way to thank God and praise him for all the great things he has done, including creating bananas, sharks, and stars, and families. Well, let's get a little wild worshiping God together through music. Like a crash of thunder Like a river tearing toward the sea Your love is spilling over Flooding every desert part of me And it feels like I'm coming alive, coming alive I can't stop, I can't help Dancing like I've got no shame No more fear, 
no more doubt Never gonna be the same I saw you won't look back Follow you into the deep Living like I'm instant free Your love is wild, wild, wild Your love is wild, wild, wild Your love is Like breathing for the first time Walking like there's air beneath my feet Your love takes me higher first time experiencing the presence of God was a moment when I was hearing this really beautiful music. And for a second, I was so caught up with the music that I just forgot about everything that was going on in my life. It's like I forgot about myself for a second. I was able to look up and see that God, this vast, immeasurable person, was with me. If you've never experienced that before, I just encourage you to look up. See if you can find how beautiful this world is, and you can catch a glimpse of the presence of God. Maybe it's looking up at the night sky. Maybe it's in your own room, finding a quiet place, closing your eyes, and hearing your own heartbeat. Someone made that heart and that someone loves you. Sometimes it's hard to breathe All these thoughts are shouting me Try to bring me to my knees And it's overwhelming Darn his head goes all around Feels like everything is crashing down Still I know where my hope is found And it's only you and ooh You say you're working everything for my good and ooh I believe every word Cause even in the madness there is peace Drowning out the voices all around
was beautiful Music done from all my unruly notes The distance is distant, it's moving close Now I see, erase the scales from my eyes Then play the scale of my life Chaos played off with a chord and a chord With a source prevented through strife and I've tasted suffering, I've been embraced by the painful buffering I've been bound by doubt so loud right now But a melody is made when you play these rusty keys So we all gotta get pressed Tuned up like instruments But I know all of life's deeper with sad Whenever we remember this Cause even in the madness There's peace Drowning out the voices All around me Through all of this chaos You are writing a symphony A symphony And even in the madness There's peace Drowning out the voices All around me was such a special time and next up we've got something else special for you every couple of months we do a fun episode made with your input that's right you send us topics challenges or questions and we put together the show and if you have ideas for future episodes go ahead and put it in the comments but we've already got today's loop show episode ready to roll hang on for the loop on this episode of the loop show likes you empathy cat toys and cracking boards hang, hang on, on for, for the, the loop, loop. Two, one. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. I'm Ricky. And I'm Judo Bob. Judo Bob, this is your first Loop Show Likes You. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, straight out of the dojo and ready to go. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Ricky, mm -hmm. but uh, this show is all about the mail that we get from our Loop friends, right? Yep, this episode belongs to the Loopsters. Uh, well, let's get into some postcards. Well, before okay. we do, let's get to know you a little uh, bit better uh, since okay. you are rarely here outside of the dojo. Yeah, uh, so I love YouTube and I love watching fail videos. Yeah. And uh, cat videos. Uh, something about it just it just makes me chuckle for days. Uh, what's your favorite cat video? Uh, it's, it's probably just a compilation of the ones that try to jump off of slippery surfaces <laughs> and do the Superman. With the full outstretched body, yes. I, I love crack that. boards. Those videos crack my ribs because of how much I laugh. What is your favorite food? Probably bread, because I'm, I'm just a simple man with a simple taste. Yeah. So just give me a nice slice of bread, and uh, Judo Bob's ready to ready to go. I, I think it's very appropriate that you like a, a, a food item that is typically broken. So right. that tracks. Yeah, we break bread at, with, with the people that break boards, and that's how we do it in our dojo. All yeah. right, let's get to some of these questions. Let's start with, uh, oh, this is great. We asked you to tell us something fun that we should know about you, and someone said, I love dino encyclopedias. Oh, yeah, those are super fun. I don't like any other encyclopedias. I didn't know that there there were specific, like, dino encyclopedias. Like, I, only ones I collect. Wow, I've, I've seen the ones that cover, like, I guess just the alphabet, like the alphabet set of encyclopedias, but none specific dinos. That's so great. Oh, this is fun. None of your beeswax. Sometimes you just don't want people to know. You, you try to keep your life a secret. I, you know what, I admire that. Yeah, there is a lot of mystery to Judo Bob. Okay, so Cash wrote, I think bananas will destroy the world. Uh, no, <laughs> not on my watch. Okay, bananas or any type of other fruit or vegetable for that matter, Judo Bob is here to save the day, okay? I eat bananas for breakfast and that's actually true. I would smash them like the bananas they are. E even like just the banana peel? like you uh, I, I like to recycle, so I'd probably just recycle the, the peel. Which, which I'd be saving the world even twice. Wow. Doing it that way. Wow. So, no need to fear. Okay, this one is from Lily. Uh, when I was four, I cut about half of my hair off. You know what, Lily, this is a, this is a common problem. Oh. Uh, I did that once and that's why my hair is so long. I, I won't cut it anymore. Wow, I, I so, made that. so half in length or half like? Oh. Like on the, the center axis, like left or right. I love it. I, I hope it was the latter because uh, I did I did this way. I oh. should have done this way. See, yeah, that's yeah. that's a statement. And that then, is a statement. And, it's, and it states you're cool. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I wonder if it would make part of your head heavier on either side. What matters to you matters to us. Which leads us to this reminder from our great friend, Leslie. Check it out. Is this thing recording? Hey, what's up, Loop? It's Leslie, and today we are talking about empathy. You've probably heard the word empathy before, like someone has probably said, hey, you should be more empathetic or show a little empathy. And listen, empathy and sympathy are not the same thing. For instance, if you had the thought, dang, I feel sorry for her, she has to record this whole thing with a pimple on her face, well, that's sympathy if you feel sorry for me. Empathy would say like, I'm gonna ignore it and just pay attention because that's what she would want me to do. No, but for real though. Empathy is more mature than sympathy. Empathy is when we take the time to truly feel feel what someone else is feeling and like sharing that feeling together. Okay, so I know I made a joke about having empathy for the pimple on my face, that was just kidding, but there are times when you really should have empathy. For example, if your friend loses their championship soccer game, you know it was a big deal to them and you're like, I don't know what to say. Or maybe one of your friends is embarrassed at school in front of everyone and you know that like it's your friend, you wanna do something for them but you don't know like how to respond. Or maybe your parents are frustrated because of a death um, of a family friend or someone in your family. And again, you're like, I don't know how I'm supposed to respond to this. All three of those are times when you can practice empathy. So let's talk about it a little more. All right, four steps to having empathy, ready? Number one, wear their perspective. Try to understand what it feels like to walk a mile in their shoes in that moment. Number two, relax with the judgment. Yes, relax with the judgment. Now is not the time to say, yeah, well at least, why are you acting like that? Dude, chill, it's just a game. No, because all of those phrases disconnect you from that person. Empathy is about connecting. This is a great time to say like, hey, yeah, I know how that feels. Speaking of feeling, step three, recognize their emotion. And you get it, you know basic emotions. You know when someone's happy or sad or mad or whatever, you can figure that out. And then step four, don't try to fix it. Just listen and sit and be with them. Like it's really hard sometimes in those bigger situations that life throws at you. But you can always say, hey, I don't really know what to say, but you're not alone and I'm here with you. All right, so remember that empathy is not about having the perfect thing to say. It's also not about feeling sorry for people. Empathy is about connecting with people. It's about connecting with them and reminding them that they are not alone. So as you grow in your maturity, you'll start to recognize more and more times that you can have empathy. You'll get better at seeing like, this is a great time to be silly. And you'll get better at seeing like, hey, I can probably just chill for a minute and just be with my friend and let them be more important than me for a change. So start putting other people's feelings before you and see how all of your friendships will grow. Empathy is so important. It's so important and it's very hard to learn, but it's so worth it. So what do we do now, Ricky? Do I like break this wheel thing or oh, do I- no. No, we actually, we spin it, and then we try one of the challenges that was submitted. Oh, like judo challenges. I mean, you never know. It is Loop Show. Let's so. spin it and find out. That wasn't much of a chop, but let's see what we got here. Okay, play with cat toys. Oh. All right. Oh. All right. Oh, boy. Oh, and we have cat ears? Okay. You know what? This looks like some sort of butterfly. There's a button. Oh my goodness. Whoa! Oh, what? Get it! Catch it! Oh, it's taunting you. Oh. Got it. You won the cat I think toy. that's what you're supposed to do, Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. It's like a little tunnel thing. All right. We start. Yep, you're almost there, Arm. Ricky. Okay. We need a bigger cat tunnel for a cat, Ricky. I just need Ricky. to dislocate my shoulder. Because cats are notoriously very nimble, so I... They are. This is fun, but it's also like an exercise. Well, I think this is le leopard, cheetah. Uh, leopard print, just like yeah. just like my ear. Can you just snap? Yeah. Okay, uh, this one, I think you're just supposed to knock it over, so... Oh, wait. I, I got one like, except it didn't come with a ball. It's it's just two different m m mice mice mousin mousin yeah yes thank you I give it a solid five out of five 
super fun. It's not quite as fun as breaking boards, but what is? I kind of wish I was a cat to have such cool toys. Right. Especially this guy. I feel like I feel like this guy could be a really good karate, like teaching, teaching toy yeah. of some kind. Yeah, cats are the karate masters of the wild. That's, that's, you've been to my dojo, I see. Yeah, that you that's, have, a, that's what's on the wall. Yeah, thank you for sending your suggestions. Yes, guys. Thank you. So, uh, what, what do we do, what do we do now, Ricky? What's the game plan? Well, now, we answer some big questions. Ooh, thank you. Nice ears. Thanks. Who created God? Whoa. <laughs> That's a big question. Yeah, several of you wrote in a question similar to this, and it's a tough one, but Allie is gonna help us out. Hey friends, so a lot of you guys had a great question. Who created God? Or maybe you've asked it like, who made God or how was God created? So let's ask our friends at Bible Project for some help. The claim in the Bible is that God is transcendent, a divine being through whom we live and move and have our being. Or as God says, I am. Okay, but I live here in this universe, so when God appears, it will make sense in some ways, but in other ways, it will break my categories. Exactly. This happens all the time when people encounter the God of the Bible. So let's look first at how this happens in the Hebrew Scriptures. Throughout the Hebrew scriptures, God appears in complicated ways that don't quite fit our categories. One common way this happens is with God's attributes. So an attribute is a way to describe what something is like. For example, a soccer ball is round. Right. Or God is wise. Yeah, great, let's take God's wisdom. So the book of Proverbs says that God created the world by his wisdom. But then there are also poems in the book of Proverbs that describe God's wisdom as a person, a co-worker through whom God architected the universe. So God's attribute becomes a separate character? Yeah, this also happens with God's glory, which sometimes appears as a human figure on a throne that's engulfed in fire. Or take God's word, which he can speak to people, but sometimes his word appears like a person. Wait, so God's attributes have become new little gods? No, no, the biblical authors believe there's only one all-powerful God. But they're comfortable talking about them as different characters. Yeah, this is part of the way that the biblical authors portray the one God's complex identity. They're God's attributes and also distinct from God. Distinct from God and also God. Yes. Once we learn to spot that way of talking about God's identity, you begin to see it all over the scriptures. In fact, you find it in the first sentences of the Bible that mention the Spirit of God. So the opening line of the Bible is pretty familiar. In the beginning, God created. So God breaks our categories. Like pretty much everything about God is like the exploding head emoji. It's just kind of like But that's a really good thing because there's so many things about God that we don't understand. And that's part of why we can worship Him. So when we ask questions like, who created God? We're trying to put God in our human brains and our human boxes. And it's just not really gonna work because God is so much bigger than that. So when I think about things that have kind of broken my brain a little bit, I think about math class, specifically middle school math with Mrs. Missy. Yes, my teacher's name is Mrs. Missy. It's kind of weird, but she's great. Anyways, one day we learned about pie and not like the pie that you eat, but like pi, like P-I, like math pi, which is crazy to me because like in a big circle and a tiny circle, it's always the same pi. It's just weird, okay? But anyways, then we learned about pi is an infinite number, okay? So it's 3.14. That's not it, man. If you look at YouTube, there's people that are going through pi for hours. It's like you guys got a lot of time on your hands, but it's 3.14159 and then it just goes on to infinity, which is a bad infinity sign. It's fine, guys. But infinity, okay, and when I think of infinity, I would think about like Buzz Lightyear, like to infinity and beyond. But it's like a real thing in math. In fact, if you wanna build your math confidence, just ask anybody, what's infinity plus one, or plus a million, or plus anything? The answer is always infinity, which is so weird, right? But you can't add anything to something that already exists forever. It is weird, man, math. So I say all of that to say that infinity can be an answer even if we don't fully understand it. And in the same way, God is still the answer even if we don't understand everything about Him. Or in other words, we don't have to understand Him completely to believe in Him fully. And don't get me wrong, like it's not just blind faith. There are so many evidence-based reasons to believe in God. There's scientists and mathematicians and all these really smart people with great arguments about why we can believe in God. But we're not always 
always going to get a really clear answer to every one of our questions because God just breaks our categories and He's so much bigger than that. But it's okay for us to ask these questions. In fact, that's part of how we get to know Him. The Bible tells us that God is a divine mystery. And so every day we get to uncover a little bit more about Him and who He is. Like just think about if you met somebody and you want to be friends with them, but you knew every single thing that you would ever need to know about this person. You'd kind of be like, well, I guess we don't really need to hang out because I already know everything about you. But with God, we get to know more about Him every single day. And that's part of the point. We're also not the first people to ever ask these big questions either. In fact, Isaiah 40 has a whole chapter talking about how God created the world. And in verses 13 through 14, there's similar questions. It says, Who can ever understand the Spirit of the Lord? Who could ever give Him advice? Did the Lord have to ask anyone to help Him understand? Did He have to ask someone to teach Him the right way? Who taught Him what He knows? Who showed Him how to understand? So again, similar questions. Who created God? How did God know how to create the world? But then it goes on in verse 26 and it says, Look up toward the sky. Who created everything you see? The Lord causes the stars to come out at night one by one. He calls each one of them by name. His power and His strength are great, so none of the stars are missing. And so who created God? Well, nobody. God is the creator. He has no beginning because He is the beginning. And it's kind of hard for our human brains to understand, but God breaks our categories. And so it may kind of break our brain a little bit, but it doesn't break our faith because we know that God is this creator. And so when I think about the stars, like I've never been on a rocket ship and like seen a star up close, but I've seen the light in the world. And it's the same way with God. I've never seen Him, but I've seen His light in the world. I've seen Him through answered prayers. I've been really stressed out and asked God to give me peace and I've felt that peace. I've been really lonely and I've asked God for a friend and somebody has come along. I've seen Him through all of those details and I see Him when I go outside and I see the world around me and I see the fact that these butterflies have these intricate designs on them. Like it could have just made them all blue and it would have been fine. But the fact that we see these special details all around us shows us that God is this creator who cares about every single one of those details. And not only did He create the stars and the world and those butterflies and literally everything, but He created you and He knows your name and the number of hairs on your head. And so He takes care of the stars and He takes care of you. And so nobody created God. He is the Creator who loves us and who takes care of everything. And that is a pretty amazing thing. And that's why we get to worship Him. Whoa, that is a lot to think about. Uh, my, my brain actually kind of, kind of hurts. Yeah, I mean, it makes me want to go out to a field and just look at the stars and just marvel at the wonderful universe that God created. That's a great idea. Okay, this week, what is one way you can admire God's creation? Camping trip, it's happening. Uh, so thank you for your big, big questions. Keep asking them and we will keep doing our best to answer them. If you'd like to send us mail, check out the description in the video. Or, okay, so what you need to do is you need to find a lawn. It doesn't have to be your own. In fact, it's probably best if it's your neighbor's. Um, you need to cut the lawn and then um, just leave a little patch of grass that has a question that you would like to send to us. Feel free to pick up a cat from your local pet store. Uh, tie a message of your choice to it and just send it out. It'll know where to go. Uh, it's kind of like those pigeons that you read about. Yeah, uh, cat pigeons. A cat pigeon is technically, yeah, the mm -hmm. technical name for it. Yeah. Eat like, let's see, what's, like 76 bananas um, in one sitting, and then take the banana peels, write out a letter and a, and a message, um, and just take a picture of it, um, and then put that picture in the mail. I would also eat as many bananas as possible just in case they try to take over the world. Right, So yeah. just, to, just to throw, yeah, throw that back. And then recycle the banana peels because that's important. Save the world twice, never yeah. remember that. Ricky, thank you so much for having me as a guest host. This has been, this has been so tubular. Thank you, stop by anytime. Uh, and feel free to stop by the dojo. We would love to have you. I know you have these secret moves, these banana breaking moves. Stop it. That uh, the Padawans would love to learn. Well, thank you. The Lu Show likes you. We look forward to hearing from you. Until next time, enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. The God of the universe who created everything from the stars to animals also created you and he loves you, 
and He wants a relationship with you. And what's crazy to think about is that when we choose to say yes to God, we choose to trust in Him, incredible things happen in our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that out of all of creation, when asked what your favorite thing is, you respond with us, that you call us your masterpiece, that you see us, you know us, and you love us. What's obvious though today is that there are some of us who maybe don't even realize how special God has made us. We don't even realize how much God loves us. Maybe you don't realize how much God loves you. Hopefully today though, you're starting to have something stirring inside of you that's opening up your mind and your eyes and your heart to the possibility that you were created for a relationship with God. And that even though there are things in our lives that just might not be good things, God makes a way for us to move past those into a relationship with Him. The way that He did that was by sending His Son Jesus to die for you and for me so that we could be forgiven of our sins and that we could be made right with God to have a relationship with Him. The God of the universe wants a relationship with you so badly that He sent His Son Jesus for you. And what the Bible tells us is that anybody who says yes to Jesus will be made new and will be made right with God. And maybe today you're realizing that that's what you've been missing this whole time. And today you want that to change. You wanna say yes to Jesus and to become one of his followers. If that's you, then simply lift your hand right now, all over the place. If you wanna say yes to Jesus, just lift your hand up so that we can pray with you and for you. If you just made that choice, repeat after me, dear Jesus, forgive me. I'm turning from my sin. I'm turning toward you. I need your love. I need your grace and I need your mercy. I give you my life in Jesus' name. Amen. We are so proud of you. For those of you that made the best choice you could ever make to say yes to Jesus, please know that you are loved by God. And we wanna help you better understand what it looks like to follow Jesus. So before you leave, talk to your small group leader, talk to somebody and let them know that you said yes to Jesus. Well, if you made that decision, tell your family, but we wanna know too. So make sure to let us know by connecting with us through the link. Loop Show Likes You is so fun that it can seem like it was just for fun, but hopefully you've learned something that can help you grow closer to Jesus this week. Talking it over is a great way to get started, and we asked some life kids what they thought. So here's some questions. Our first question is, what is your favorite thing that God created? Ava, age 11, said, people probably, but I was about to say animals. <laughs> here's another one. What's something about God that sounds too good to be true? Connor, age 10, said that Jesus was raised from the dead and the universe is in his palm. Those kids had some good ideas for questions, but now it's your turn to talk about what God is like. So I'll put the questions up on the screen so your family can see them and talk about them. And just let us know your answers in the chat. And remember, click that link to let us know if you're new or that you've joined us today. And thanks for being here at Life Kids Online. Hey families, I just wanna let you know that we have two YouVersion Bible apps for you and your family. There's the Bible app for kids, for your littles, and the Bible app for the rest of the family. If you have an older kid with their own device, it's time for them to have their very own Bible app account. Parents, you get to share prayers with your family and even complete daily Bible plans together to track your progress and leave comments and questions for each other to talk about. In 3 John chapter 1, it says, there's nothing better than to see your kids walking in the truth. And this is a fantastic way to do that very thing. 